so in this video, I'm going to prove that it doesn't make sense to have bonds if you're carrying a mortgage. I'm going to prove that for you. And Pablo is going to agree with me here. Come here, buddy. So Pablo says, you're right, Daddy. You should not have bonds if you have a mortgage. So let's prove this to you. So we're going to take our trusty PVC pipe with our puppy dog. It doesn't get much more professional than this, my friends. Give me a thumbs up if you agree. All right, so what happens are, is we have a, remember, the idea is we just sold a house. Um, we have 325,000 bucks for proceeds on the home. We have three options, all right? We're gonna say we can invest a whole 325 on our downside house and pay cash money, all right? So whatever it is you're doing, you're saying that we're gonna downsize from four beds to two, whatever you wanna do. And we're gonna pay cash money. Uh, or we could borrow and we're gonna put 20% uh, down so we don't have to pay pr uh, PMI, private mortgage insurance. So in this case, we have a $260,000 loan for 30 years at four and a half percent, which principal and interest, not taxes and insurance, just principal and interest. Remember, taxes and insurance go whether or not you have the loan or not, just keep that in mind. So principal and interest is 13, 17 a month. So the first option is, all right, we're gonna buy a house with cash money and we're just gonna use that 13, 17 a month and invest it in stocks. We're gonna say we're gonna invest in stocks. So our monthly payment is 13, 17. That's our monthly contribution into the stock market. Uh, for 360 years, uh, 360 months, that's 30 years, i.e. the equivalent of a typical amortization loan for a mortgage. Our expected rate of return is 6%. We're just gonna say we only expect 6%, expected rate of return is six. Uh, in 30 years, we're gonna have $1.322 million in that portfolio, all right? We're reinvesting everything, expect a rate of return of six, nothing fancy. However, in 30 years, we're also gonna sell the thing and we're gonna take a 15% hit on the entirety of the portfolio. You really won't, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, disrespecting stocks here a little bit. You're not gonna pay 15% on the entirety because you have a capital gain uh, cost basis that will be uh, 360 times 13, 17, plus whatever dividends you've received. So I'm using that as a, as a, uh, a very low rate of return after taxes, but I wanna show it to you because I gotta use the same for bonds too. I don't wanna make any stocks or bonds look better. So I'm gonna kind of give them both the, uh, the short end of the stick. So in this case, you got 1.124 million liquid account, liquid money. I'm just using 15% tax just because uh, cap, long-term capital gains. I, look, just don't get too caught up. Well, tax, I, I don't care. We're just using this to show you because it's a significant number difference here. It won't make it matter anyway. So that's not too bad. You say, okay, well, that's pretty good. 1.124 million. But then you say, look, what if we leverage? Because loaning, uh, borrowing to turn around and invest in stocks is nothing more than leverage backed by real estate. So it's not like a margin loan where you're margining stocks, you're loaning it on your real estate. Nothing wrong with doing that necessarily. In fact, most people are, uh, are leveraged because they own investments and they own a mortgage. Most people are leveraged right now. It's not just for you know greedy freaking Wall Street tycoons, it's for most of us, myself included. So what we do is we say, okay, in this case, we're gonna take the $260,000 that we're borrowing we're gonna put we're gonna buy the house of the 260, we're gonna borrow, we're gonna pay that 1317 a month, but instead we're gonna take the 260 that we would have put towards the house, and instead we're gonna invest it in stocks. Again, our expected rate of return is six percent. We have 30 uh, years, so the same same time frame, a 30-year amortization. So instead of taking the 260 and putting into the uh, the home, we're actually using the money, the bank's money to put into the markets, if that makes sense. And we're borrowing in order to do that, all right? So in this case, after the all this is the loans paid off, we have a balance of 1.493 million. Again, we paid the loan off. We did not have this 1317 in which to put into the market like this right here. We did have the 1317 here simply because we did not take a loan. Here we didn't. So here we're just taking the 260 right up front. We're putting the market, we're gonna expect a rate of return of 6%. Uh, we have 1.493 million after 30 years and we're paying a 15% tax and we have 1.26 million when all said and done. And inherently that makes sense. And we have more from the beginning and we only have a 13, 17, the very first uh, period of time. Here we have immediately $260,000. So more at the beginning, less at the beginning. We're building up, building up, building up. But at the end of the day, we still have significantly more, 270, eh, 250,000 more there uh, simply to get started with that $260,000. It only makes sense, but it, that paid off well with a 6% expected rate of return. 
Now, let me put this guy down. Can I put you down, big man? You want to say hi to everybody? Well, Pablo, what's, what's your take on all this, Bobs? What's your take? Pablo says, don't forget to hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to comment. Do you want to see more Pablo? Say yes in the comments. If you don't want to see more Pablo, say no. Good boy. All right, we're going to put you almost done here, buddy. Then we'll take you outside with your brothers and sisters. All right, so the last one is we're going to say, what if we put in the bonds? So, again, we're borrowing the, mar the money, but we're risk averse. We don't like the market. So, we're going to put the money into bonds instead. Par value is 260000 bucks. We're going to buy a 30-year. Uh, a <laughs> He's looking at me through the beer. We're going to buy a 30-year bond, $260,000. We're going to invest it in a 30-year treasury, which is paying about 3% right now. It's actually even lower than that. But we're going to use 3% for simplicity. Uh, we're going to get 7800 bucks a year in annual interest, but we do have to pay 15% tax on the annual interest, which gives us 6630 a year in interest. We times 6630 by 30 years will give us 190, basically $200,000 of interest when all said and done. Plus, we get our par value back at 260. Remember, that's how a bond works. You invest the 260, you collect your interest, and then when the par matures, you get the, uh, the bond matures, you get your par value. Uh, value back. So we get $458,000 here. Now I'm telling you right now, people say, but Josh, you're forgetting you can reinvest that. Man, I know you can reinvest that 6,600 bucks. You can't re you don't reinvest it in the bond you bought though. You can't, that's not how bonds work. Bond mutual funds, sure. It's not, it's, I'm telling you right now, everyone gets caught up in the idea of I own a bond. I own this flat bond right here. I'm getting the interest. I can in reinvest the interest back in the bond. You literally, you can't do that. You have to reinvest it in something else. Remember how I said we were using, uh, we're, we're kind of short shifting on this over here, the stocks over here as well. We're here, we're kind of short shifting on the bonds equally. So we're kind of, I think it's kind of even, Stephen, here in terms of giving the bonds and the stocks a short shift, if that makes sense. So, because again, you're not paying to, you're not paying capital gain tax on the entirety of the portfolio, not by any stretch of the imagination. So I'm, I'm having much higher tax rates here and I'm much lower, which will have a much less effect on future value, uh, much lower, uh, you're not reinvesting interest but even if you want to say you can reinvest the interest and got another hundred thousand bucks it still doesn't i mean it doesn't hold it, its own so here we got the par value plus the interest you've received and you have four hundred fifty eight thousand dollars all right so you can see right there it doesn't make any sense to have bonds when you have a mortgage at all so the question that you need to ha ask yourself is either if you're going to have a mortgage you want to have all stocks and this is what i'm going to share with part two in this and i'll do another session on this because i like trying to keep some of these under 10 minutes because i want to have a different idea per these video topics because these ones i think are actually pretty interesting uh we'll go half and half next time but anyway if you're going to take a mortgage you got to be aggressive on your investments so for what you're taking the mortgage does that make sense so stay tuned i'm going to show you what happens next time with the idea for my wife which i thought makes a lot of sense so stay tuned thanks now